This is Math 98. We're going to look at section 7.6. And this section is the capstone to all of this factoring work that we've been doing. It just puts one more piece on top of, um, of all the work that we've been doing. So these something that's in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c is a quadratic. And when it's equal to 0, um, we try and solve it. We try and figure out what x values we could plug in to, uh, to make this a true statement. And A, B, and C are called parameters. Those will be numbers, like 3x squared plus 9C, 9x plus 5, or something like that, equals 0. And we're solving for x. So a couple pieces that I want us to think about first. And the first one is the zero product problem. Love. I love how mathematicians name things, because if we have a product that is zero, this is the property for it. It basically states this. if a times b equals 0, you're going to multiply and get a 0, then uh, a equals 0 or b equals 0. And that's not an exclusive or, so it could be both are equal to 0. So how does that help us? So let's think about this. If I had x plus 1 times x minus 4 equal to 0, I've got two things multiplied together. That, like that's my a, that's my b. This times this is 0. So that means either this whole thing ends up being a zero, because zero times something is zero, or this whole thing ends up being a zero, because something times zero equals zero. So what we could do is we could say, all right, well, x plus one has to equal zero, or x minus four has to equal zero. And I can solve this pretty easily, subtract the one. So x equals negative one, add the four, or four. And there's two answers to that, and they're solved. Here's a couple more examples like that. Notice what's going on. Like that could have been factored from something. So we have something we already know how to factor, get it into that form, and then we can solve it because now it's equal to zero. Up till now, we haven't been had, we've just had expressions. They haven't been equations, they haven't been equal to each other. Now we can say since it's equal to zero, we can actually solve it and get some values for x. So let's say we ended up with something like this. These two things are multiplied together, they give me zero. So that means that either this equals zero, or this equals zero. And so solve them. And in all of these, you're always going to go like, move that part over, boop, divide by that part, right? Like plus three, divide by two. So x equals three halves. And notice on this one, we'll add one and divide by five. So that answer will be five. Divide by five. So in this case, x would equal 3 halves and 1 fifth. And you can leave them as, as fractions. As a matter of fact, uh, I recommend that you do. All right, 3a times 4a minus 5. So this times that is equal to 0. All right, so 3a could equal 0. Or 4a minus 5 could equal 0. Divide by 3, it looks like a equals 0. Add 5. Divide by 4, looks like uh, a also equals 5 fourths. Uh, y plus 9 squared equals 0. Well, if you square any, the, the way to square and get a 0 is 0, so I basically have to make this a 0. Notice if I write this out as y plus 9 times y plus 9 equals 0, right? Something squared, I just get negative 9 twice. You don't have to write it once. All right, so there's that 0 product property. So now we'll take a step back. We'll start with a, a form, factor it, and then get the solutions to it. I'll get a couple examples written down here. So this first one, x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Let's factor this. I've got three terms. That leading coefficient is 1. So I want things that multiply to negative 8 and add to 2. How about 4 and negative 2? Now, notice what I've done is I've factored it. So now I have things multiplied together equal to 0. So this thing has to be a 0. So x must equal negative 4. Or this thing has to be a 0. x must equal 2, and that's my answer. And it's really easy for me to check these. Like, take 2, plug it back into here. 2 squared plus 2 times 2, that's 8 minus 8 is 0. Yeah, you can plug it back in and check and see if you're right. All right, let's factor this one. Three terms of things that multiply to 4. Add to 9, 
b plus 7, b plus 2 equals 0. And so that means that b must be negative 7 or negative 2 solved. Now these have been nice because they've been equal to 0, right? And I have a 0 product property. Now when I have something like this, it's still a, it's still a quadratic, right? It has a c squared in it. But it's not equal to 0. So I am always going to make sure that my thing is equal to 0, first thing. So minus 10c plus 8, minus 10c plus 8. So I've got 3c squared minus 10c plus 8 equals 0. Now that it's equal to 0, now I can go on my route. I've got three terms, no greatest factor to take out. I'm going to use the AC method here. Uh, 3 times 8 is what? 24. So I want things that multiply to 24, add to negative 10, plus negative 6 and negative 4. <laughs> so now I'm going to split up that negative 10 into that. Beep up boop. So here I'll factor out a 3c. Here I'll factor out a negative 4. Factor out a c minus 2. Great. Equal to 0 factored. So what makes this a 0, 2? What makes this a 0? If you don't see the 2 thirds right away, you know, just, just solve it. Uh, that equal to 0, just solve it, and you'll, you'll get your answer. So C is those two numbers. All right, let's do a few more of these. So this next one, this 45B squared, blah, 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 is not equal to 0 yet. Again, first thing we want to do is get everything equal to 0. So let's add 17B to both sides. All right, so we've got 45b squared plus 15b equals 0. Let's factor this thing out. Uh, these both are divisible. Uh, I'm looking at a greatest common factor for these, and I can take out a 15b, and that leaves me 3b plus 1 equals 0. So I've got two things multiplied together. They give me 0, so 15b equals 0 which means b is 0, right, divide by 15. And uh, 3b plus 1 is equal to 0. You would subtract the 1 when you're solving that and divide by the 3. So there's my answers for that. Uh, 25p squared equals 49. There's a couple different ways to solve this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one in our quadratic style. I'm going to get it equal to 0. So subtract 49 from both sides. And I notice this is the difference of two squares. This is 5p squared, and this is 7 squared. So I could say 5p plus 7 times 5p minus 7 equals 0. So both of these two things equal 0, right? This times this is 0, so this equals 0, or this equals 0. When I go to solve those, Subtract 7, divide by 5. Add 7, divide by 5. There's a nice little symmetry there. All right, so on this one, um, I'm going to need to get it equal to 0. I want to factor it. You know, this is a mess. I'm going to have to multiply this out first, then subtract that so I can combine like terms, get it equal to 0, and then I'll have to factor what I've got. So let me multiply this out first. So, uh, 2m times m is 2m squared. M plus 6M is 7M. All right, subtract 12M from both sides. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5. All right, so now I've got it in the standard quadratic form, equal to 0. I had to do a bit of manipulation for it. I had to fold it up, and now I'm going to unfold it. I'll factor this using AC method. So 2 times 3 is Six, so I need things to multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. Uh, how about negative 3 and negative 2? <laughs> I'm going to split up that negative 5 into that. Factor a 2m out of there. Factor a negative 3 out of there. Great. I've got that m minus 1. Factor it out. What makes this a 0? One, what makes this a zero? Add three, divide by two, three halves. Lovely. All right. Oh, no, so I've got something cubed. 
Well, let me get it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract that 24x squared from both sides and add that 18x to both sides. And I won't be able to combine any of those. None of them are like terms. Give myself enough. All right. So now let me look at this. Uh, greatest common factor. I, I think I could take a 2x out of all of these. Yeah, let me take a 2x out. Leaving me 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And you could factor this using AC. It looks to me like it's probably a perfect square. Right? Um, 2 times 2x times 3. Yep. So this factors to 2x minus 3 squared equals 0. You can write it this way. You can write it this way. It's going to give you the same. But uh, what makes this a 0 is 0. And that'll give you that same answer. Add 3, divide by 2, 3 halves twice. Okay, last one. Doop, doop, doop. Let's add 33b to both sides to get it equal to 0. Always get it equal to 0. And uh, greatest common factor, 3. There's a 3 in each of these. So I'm going to take out a 3. And then factoring out a 3, like if you want to factor from here, you'll still get there and you'll still get the answers. It's just you're dealing with bigger numbers. It's more work. Like factor out what you can. All right, this looks like an AC method to me. AC, uh, 6 times negative 10 is negative 60. I want things that multiply to negative 60 but add to 11. Hmm. Well, the positive piece has got to be bigger. 4 going to there? Yeah, negative 4, 15. That's it right there. That gives me an 11. So I've got 3. And again, this negative 4 and 15, that's how I'm breaking up the 11 because then I can do factor by grouping. 3 still hanging out. Um, do, do, do. How about a 2b out of these? How about a 5 out of these? Lovely. It gives me that 3b minus 2. So I've got 3 times 3b minus 2 times 2b plus 5, right? Because I factored this out equals 0. So this is interesting. I've got three things multiplied together that can equal 0. So it just like, you know, that. Zero property, product property, A, B equals zero. If it's A times B times C equals zero, then any of those have to, could equal zero. So if I look at this first one, though, that three doesn't do much for me. Three never equals zero. So it doesn't give me any in, in additional information. Uh, this is equal to zero. Add two, divide by three at two-thirds. This is equal to zero. Subtract five, divide by two there. There are my pieces. Great. Well, that's our last piece for this for this whole section. Um, so it's everything we've been doing just with that zero property uh, kind of tacked onto the bottom of it. If you have any questions as you're going over the problem set, uh, message me or post them in the forum.